So I know what you're probably thinking. How do you speedrun Wii Sports Resort Golf? It sounds like a joke. What, do you just smack the ball as hard as you can, trying to hit hole-in-one after hole-in-one? Well, not exactly. The reality is, it's a lot more complicated than just that. You have to plan all your moves ahead of time. Make on-the-spot calculations while under pressure. Aim with impeccable precision. Hit incredibly difficult shots while knowing you're on world record pace. Hardly anyone is up to the task, and over the years, just a few have risen to the top to claim the world record for any stretch of time. This is their story. Wii Sports Resort Golf is a strange speedrun. Given that it's a Wii game, the way you take each stroke is by swinging your arm using the Wii's motion controls. The harder you swing, the further the ball goes. It sounds simple enough, but given the tiny target you're aiming for, you need to be super precise. You can also pick which club to use. Drivers and irons are best for long shots, while wedges and putters are good for shorter range shots. The first run we're going to look at was performed by a guy known as Ya Boy Be True. There probably were people who speedran it before him, but he appears to be the first person with recorded speedruns of Wii Sports Resort Golf. He did a series of runs in February 2015, before setting his best time that May. 12 minutes and 46 seconds. True's goal was simple enough get through all 18 holes as fast as possible. It all started right here on hole 1. He used the driver to hit the ball down the fairway, then an iron to hit it further onto the green, then used the putter to hit it into the hole. Three shots. Pretty easy, right? Well, one other thing you had to take into account was the wind speed and direction. It can be one of eight directions, and range anywhere from perfectly still to 20 miles per hour. He had 20 mile per hour wind to the west on hole 1, so he had to aim all of his shots quite a bit to the right of where he thought they needed to go. It worked out pretty well, and he was able to get himself a birdie. For hole 2, the hole is close enough to the start that you can hit a hole in 1. But True actually didn't want to do that, because of the game's internal system that more or less controls how this game is speedran. The replay system. Although hitting really impressive shots like hole in 1s or chip ins seem fast, they ultimately end up losing time. Because if the game thinks your shot is good enough, it will show you a long replay of it. The game system is complicated, but replays are generally triggered if one of three conditions is satisfied. If you chip the ball in off the flag or have the ball hit the flag and land close to the hole, if you putt the ball from far away or with a curved angle, or if you hit the ball from very far away and it either lands in the hole, like a hole in one, or lands within a few feet of the hole. The distance the ball can land from the hole and still trigger a replay depends on how far from the hole the shot was from. So, True's strategy for hole 2 was to hit the ball onto the green, but not so close to the hole that it triggered a replay, then put it into the hole. He did so successfully. On hole 3, he accidentally hit a tree, but was still able to get a solid birdie out of it. On hole 4, he missed the putt on a shot that might have triggered a replay if it went in, then on hole 5, he overcompensated for the slope of the green. Holes 6 and 7, on the other hand, featured long putts that just barely made it in the hole. Hole 8 featured an interesting situation. He hit it super close to the hole, but then it started rolling. Since it took so long to stop moving and go to the next shot, it actually would have been faster to land further away. It's just another example of the accurate shots not always being the fastest ones. Hole 9 had another pretty bad missed putt, then True was on to the back 9. Hole 10 featured a very long putt, then Hole 11 had this shot that probably missed a replay by half a foot. Nice approach! Hole 12 has two paths you can take. You can go to the right around the fairway, or aim for this tiny patch of grass on the left. 
The left path is ever so slightly faster on average, but depending on the wind, the right path is sometimes the better move. True went to the left and made it through. Hole 13 is an example of how a bad score can still be fast. True's first shot landed in the bunker, but that meant it didn't roll after landing. So he was able to really quickly set up for the second shot, then tap it in on the third one. Remember, a worse score on a hole doesn't necessarily mean it was slower. Hole 14 is infamous for its trees that line the portion of the course you want to aim at. True hit one with his first shot, but still converted it into a birdie after a nice shot onto the green later on. He unfortunately missed another tough putt on hole 15, and then on hole 16, he had a tough decision to make. There's once again two paths to take here, either going around to the left, or risking a shot right through the trees to just barely make it onto the green. The right path is undeniably faster, and True lined up to go for it, but then he saw the wind blowing to the west, which would have made his shot much harder. So he backed out and went left. He still got a birdie, it just wasn't as fast as it could have been. His first shot on hole 17 made it onto the green, but it was far from the hole. He had to do two putts to get it in. And finally, he was on hole 18, a hole made up of several islands to shoot onto. He made it onto the green in two shots, missed the putt, then tapped it in to complete his world record speedrun. There were obviously a decent amount of mistakes in this run. He missed six putts across the 18 holes, for instance. But there was also a lot that True did well. He finished 13 under par, and he wasted little time between shots by very quickly lining the next one up. It was a solid start, but there were still improvements to be made. However, for the next three years, nobody else really ran the game at the top level. By early 2018, True's time of 12.46 was still the world record, with nobody else even getting close to it. But that all changed in February 2018, because seemingly out of nowhere, one of the most famous speedrunners in the world began running the game. The runner, surprisingly enough, was Super Mario Bros. world record holder, Darbian. Darbian learned the game for the 12 hour challenge, an event created by speedrunner Golden where you pick a game and learn how to speedrun it in only 12 hours. Darbian ended up settling on Wii Sports Resort Golf, and quickly discovered how tough it was to aim accurately on every shot. Stop, it's like, oh, it's, I've messed up every single one of these putts. Swing. <laughs> but he got a lot better. And after the challenge ended, he continued running the game. He found success with it, lowering his personal best down close to the world record using mainly the same strategies as True did. As of February 7th, he was just 5 seconds behind the record. Later that same day, he got a run that was ahead of the record by 5 seconds thanks to a really accurate shot on hole 2. Keep in mind, his splits are comparing to his personal best, not the world record. He missed an easy putt on hole 4, but the record missed the putt on both holes 4 and 5, so after hole 5, Darbian was 15 seconds ahead of True's record. Unfortunately, the next few holes were less than ideal. I should've, I should've, no, that was bad. Yeah, that's a little too much. Too much in the juice department. He lost 26 seconds over holes 6, 7, 8, and 9. That meant he was 11 behind the record, but there was still a lot of time to save. True had some missed putts and other bad shots in the first half of his back 9, so Darbian got to work bringing it back. That's beautiful. That was a, that's beautiful. I really that's beautiful. Darbian was actually a second ahead of the record going into hole 15. He was in a good position, and if he didn't miss any putts, he had a good shot at beating the record. And perhaps that pressure was on his mind when he got to the end of hole 15. Not that. Oh, it went in! Holy cow. 
This was a really good run. On hole 16, he was committed to going for the right side strat. Pretty much the best case scenario here was getting it in 3 shots. One shot to get it into the bunker or somewhere in the general vicinity of the hole. Then one shot to get it in position for a realistic putt. Then one shot to put it in. That's what he was going for. Instead, this is what happened. Nice shot! Yes! Yes! You can't make that shot off. Nice approach! Holy cow. The ball skidded off the bunker just enough to slow it down and have it land right near the hole. It was insane, and it paid off. Darbian was now 23 seconds ahead of the world record. His last two holes didn't even have to be that great, and they weren't. He had to do two putts on hole 17, and he took an extra shot to get closer to the hole on 18, but it was still enough to snag the world record. This speed run of Wii Sports Resort Golf is a perfect example of a law that I call the Darbian effect. Darbian had several hundred, even thousands of viewers, watching him play Wii Sports Resort Golf, a category that had just six runs and a world record that hadn't been seriously challenged in three years. When a runner of his popularity brings that much attention to a game with a small speedrunning scene, it's bound to give it a huge boost. And as a result of the Darbian effect, Within days of his record, Wii Sports Resort Golf had three new runners going for the world record. Alaska XP2, MD Cross, and Tendog. The first one to strike was Alaska XP2, just four days after Darbian's world record. Alaska had ran the game months prior, and was actually second place behind True. But Darbian's push for the world record inspired him to keep going, so he lowered his personal best multiple times in early February. On February 11th, just four days after Darbian's record, Alaska had a great run going after the first seven holes. He only had one real mistake up to this point, a single missed putt on hole four. Unfortunately, this was his hole eight. Uh, of course. Oh, no, dude. No, God damn it, dude. Thankfully, Alaska cleaned up the run quite a bit in the back nine. He hit this super long putt on 13, then actually matched Darbian's insane hole 16. After a par on 17 and a birdie on 18, Alaska had himself a new world record. Oh, dude. 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 MD Cross was next. He had a unique skill set. He quickly became known for being extremely good at hitting shots but struggled to avoid replays and use the best routes. For example, take this run of his on February 13th. He nailed putt after putt in the first 9 holes, but then accidentally hit this shot on hole 10. <laughs> no way. <laughs> it triggered a replay that lost him time. And then 2 holes later on hole 12, <laughs> Still, thanks to hitting most of his putts, he was 9 ahead of the record after hole 15. He didn't get the insane hole 16 that Alaska had, and he missed a putt on hole 17, but an excellent hole 18 was just enough to beat out Alaska with a 12-19. <laughs> he got it. 12-19. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Alaska and Cross would each lower the record one more time over the next three days. These two runs followed the same pattern of Cross typically being more accurate with his shots, but taking longer to set them up. He ultimately had the record of 12 12 by February 16th, before 10 Dog was on a record paced run the next day. 10 Dog loaded the game via USB, which reduced the loading times between holes by about 6 seconds overall. This method of playing the game would later be banned, but Tendog was allowed to use it at this point in time. 
Anyway, Tendog missed the putt on hole 5 and he triggered a replay on hole 6, but was even with Cross after the front 9. After pretty much maintaining his pace, he got into hole 18 just a few seconds behind the world record. If he could get an eagle instead of Cross's birdie, he'd just barely get the record. He would have to put the ball in after this shot regardless of where it landed. This was going to be tough. He missed world record by one second. This is when a fourth competitor entered into the scene, Sir Tyler. He lowered the record to 12.07 with an unrecorded run, but on February 20th, he took it down to 12.05 with a video. Unfortunately, the video quality is pretty awful. It's not worth looking at this run too closely. So, here's where the situation was at. It had been less than two weeks since Starbian's record. Six new world records had been set in that time, with the latest run clocking in at 12.05. Six seconds from a sub-12 minute run, with four top-level competitors going for it. It was a mad scramble. Who was going to get the first 11 minute time? Well, the day after Sir Tyler's 12.05, MD Cross was in position to smash it. He was virtually perfect through 8 holes, then even after missing a tough putt on hole 9, he was 5 seconds ahead of the world record. He had a clean 10 and 11, then nailed the left side strat on hole 12 to pull 12 seconds ahead. He kept hitting all of his shots, even hitting the flagpole on hole 14. And then it was time for hole 16, a hole that Tyler messed up pretty badly in his record. All Cross could do was aim to the right and hope for the best. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was. Are you gonna? Oh god! First time I've seen you get on the green. Get in there, get in there, ball! Oh, he got it. No replay, no replay, no replay. Cross was now an incredible 33 seconds ahead of the world record, with time to save on hole 17 since Tyler only got a par. He was on pace to get an 11:20x. This was incredible. Unfortunately, he barely missed this putt on hole 17, so his pace fell back to the 1130s. But this was a chance to get a massive world record. He just had to get through hole 18. Get up there. Get up there. Oh my god. Daddy came, I'm still no. gonna get it. No! <laughs> I am so bad at this game. A triple bogey on hole 18. Cross missed the record by 6 seconds. Sub 12 would just have to wait. Until later that same day. You got some 12! Oh my god. Holy shit. Woo! You got some 12. Oh. And so, Cross had just barely taken the record to a sub 12, but it clearly had the potential to go much lower. Cross triggered a replay on hole 5, and holes 7 and 14 were pretty disastrous. Besides, he just had a run that was on 11.20 pace going into the last few holes, and even that run wasn't perfect. So yes, there was an 11.59, but the community's work wasn't done yet. The top four runners were all still there, ready to take the run lower into the 11 minute range. So over the next few weeks, here's what they accomplished.
And at this point, something very interesting happened. After a guy known as the Roadrunner tied the record with an 1134, Tyler just started to take off. While the other competitors stayed in the background, Tyler kept going. He wasn't doing anything drastically different. He was just hitting nearly all of his shots and wasting no time. Sub-12 had been smashed. Was Sub-11 a real possibility now? Eleven sixteen, And then, something big was figured out. While Tyler was in the middle of his grind to lower the record, he and Tendog made a forum post detailing a new strategy that would forever change the way Wii Sports Resort Golf was played. Pin Manip. The pin location refers to the location of the flagpole, and subsequently the hole, on each of the 18 greens. Its exact position is random each time you play, which speedrunners just had to accept. Sometimes the pin location would be favorable to make an easy putt, while other times it would be on a slope or in a much harder position. But in March 2018, Tendog made a speedrun.com forum post explaining how the system isn't actually as random as it seems. As it turns out, there's a total of 6 pin locations on each hole. 3 are A pins, while 3 are B pins. The B pins are easier than A pins. They're located usually in the center of the green, typically away from slopes. The A pins, on the other hand, are farther from the center and on slopes. The way the game determines whether it'll give you an A or a B pin is your overall score. If you're doing well and are significantly under par, the game tries to make life harder on you and gives you an A pin. If you're struggling and your score is worse, the game throws you a bone by giving you a B pin. Now, speedrunners are pretty good at the game, so without exception, they were getting A pins on every single hole. And that just made sinking all of their putts even harder. So, this new understanding of how pins worked was nice and all, but did it actually matter? It didn't. Until Tyler and Tendog figured out how to use it to their advantage. Water strats on hole 1. The game forces you to give up and move on to the next hole after missing enough shots, so on hole 1, you could just hit the ball into the water over and over again until you moved on to hole 2. It takes 6 shots to get a give up on hole 1, and this is about 4 seconds slower than the traditional strategy of getting a birdie. However, it also puts your score at plus 8, meaning you're set to get the easier B pins on nearly every single hole until the end. So, even though you lose a few seconds on hole 1, it made life way better in the long run. All of those missed putts from previous runs would now become a lot easier. With Pinmanip to his advantage, Tyler kept doing attempts. He got an 11.07 unrecorded, and then on March 19th, he got a great run going early. He did the give up on hole 1, then kept moving. Thanks to better pin locations, he was getting birdies and eagles on a bunch of different holes. It wasn't perfect since he still did miss a putt on hole 7, but in general it was obvious the pin locations were helping a lot. He got a couple pars in the back 9, but still had a slim chance at sub 11 after a solid birdie on hole 16. Hole 17 was another birdie, and then he answered hole 18. If he could get an eagle here, completing the hole in 3 strokes, he had a shot at sub 11. But he needed to play perfectly. That's definitely over there. I'm gonna have to hit a... I need a 5 iron with all the backs that I can get. Yes, 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 that's good. Tell me it's good. Oh god. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh my god. Just barely. 1059.1. And so, the Wii Sports Resort Golf World Record had been brought under 11 minutes. It's important to keep in mind that this still happened in March 2018. Darbian's record was just a month and a half earlier. Over the course of those six weeks, everything had changed. 19 new world records were set, by six different runners, lowering the record down almost two full minutes. But after this 10.59, Tyler and most of the rest of the community took a break. He was cemented at the top of the leaderboard, 
with nobody else coming within 30 seconds of him, and he'd lowered the record down time and time again over the past month. And so, for the first time since Darbian's record, the world record remained stagnant. For one month. Starting in April 2018, Tyler spent the next several months running the category on and off. As was mentioned earlier, no one was even close to him, so he was the only hope to keep taking the record lower. Even though the world record was under 11 minutes, there was still time to save. Tyler could avoid the few missed putts he still had, get more birdies and eagles instead of pars, and be faster between each of his shots. So that's what he worked on doing. He got back-to-back -back records in the 1050s in April, before coming back for more in June. He had a run that was 13 behind the record after the front nine thanks to some missed putts, but went all out in the back nine. Birdie after birdie, with eagles mixed in too. It would end up being a huge world record of 1040, and given how far behind he was early, this run proved that a time in the 1020s was possible. Some more months passed after this record, but in September, something absolutely insane happened. Something that nobody could have seen coming, that changed the way viewers would see Wii Sports Resort golf speedruns. Tyler got a capture card. Armed with a clear video feed, Tyler would continue doing attempts and lowering the record over the course of 2018. His attempt counter showed that he had done more than 13,000 runs of golf. That's a lot of attempts. And a few months later, he would begin using a trick that gave him just slightly better odds than a new record. Wind Minip. In March 2018, Tendog explained how, just like the pin locations, the wind wasn't entirely random either. As was mentioned earlier, there's 8 wind directions. The game is forced to select one of the 8 directions for each of the first 8 holes without repeating any, then do the same for the next 8 holes, before 2 random directions for the final 2 holes. So, whichever direction you get for the first hole, you can guarantee you won't see again until at least hole 9. This comes into play on holes 3 and 5, two holes where generally, eagles are only possible if the wind isn't blowing south in any of the three directions. If you get a southern wind on hole 1, that means that specific wind direction was eliminated for holes 3 and 5 too, since it can't be repeated. So if Tyler saw wind on hole 1 that didn't point south in some way, he would immediately restart and try again, hoping to boost his odds by a bit by taking one of the southern winds away. Naturally, this would increase his attempt counter since more than half of his runs were reset just seconds into it. It also is convenient because of a new timing method that runners began using. Runs used to start upon selecting 18 holes from the menu, but now started upon pressing restart. That meant the timer now started with about 3 seconds added to it already to compensate, since the game begins quicker after hitting the restart button. Over the next several months, Tyler took a few seconds off the world record. There were highlights such as this run, where he got eagles on holes 3 and 5, but missed several putts after, before bringing it back with this shot on hole 18. Ship in for Albatross. By November 2018, Tyler had taken the record down to 1035. He had set the past 13 world records in a row, and quite simply, seemed untouchable. He had a 43 second lead over second place, and the odds in any of them catching up were minuscule. It's remarkable to see someone this dominant in a game for this long. You occasionally see it in people like Andrew G with Super Mario Bros, or Arcus with Ninja Gaiden. Just like them, Tyler had no rival. He was just too far ahead. And there was only one person who could stop him. This is Danny, better known as the world record holder in the original Wii Sports Golf. By a mile. His closest rival in that game was none other than Tyler himself, but Danny had a big lead. He was the undisputed champion of Wii Sports Golf, holding the same type of stranglehold in that game as Tyler in Wii Sports Resort. Everyone was waiting for him to start playing Wii Sports Resort Golf, and he finally began in March 2019. Danny was pretty much the only person in the world with the skill needed to catch up to Tyler, 
so everyone was quickly monitoring his progress. He posted his first personal best on March 16th. This is where he got his time to by April 6th. It became obvious right away that Danny was going to make a push for the world record. He was the only one who could do it. One of his big strengths was sinking putts quickly and accurately. He rarely missed, and never took more than a fraction of a second to aim. It was remarkable to watch. Just a few days later, he got a run going that was looking good early. He got the eagle on hole 3, but didn't get the wind for it on hole 5. Still, his front 9 was nearly perfect, as he sunk putt after putt on every hole. He kept it up in the back 9 too, and was 9 seconds ahead of the record after hole 16. Unfortunately, on hole 17, his first shot went into the water, causing him to lose his whole lead. Still, thanks to an eagle on hole 18, he managed to finish just over two tenths of a second ahead of Tyler. It was just barely a new world record, and it took him less than a month after starting. But Danny wanted more, so he kept playing, and about a month later, he had this run that looked innocent enough early after getting birdies on both holes 3 and 5. After the front 9, he was 8 seconds behind the record. But he wasn't out of it yet, because he kept hitting putt after putt. On hole 17, he went for a different strategy, the intentional give up. He repeatedly shot the ball into the water over and over, similar to on hole 1. It's a couple seconds slower than getting a birdie here, but it's faster than the par, and given how difficult a birdie can be, it's usually safer to just take the give up and lose a tiny bit of time. So he had a bit of a lead going into the last hole, where he would need an eagle to beat the record. Shot one was good, but Danny undershot the next one, landing far from the hole. An eagle seemed impossible. But then, he did this. What was that? Well, the flagpole in Wii Sports Resort Golf has some weird properties. It may look like a cloth flag, but it acts like a wall. If you hit it, the ball usually just drops straight down. So Danny pulled out a driver, which shoots the ball faster than any other club, and aimed right for the flag. It's really precise, but possible to hit that tiny target. And Danny did, at the end of a run, on world record pace. It was amazing, and it was enough for a new world record of 1027. For the first time in several months, Tyler had been knocked off the top. Danny was the new champion. And even though Tyler had been so dominant in the past, this time he wasn't even trying to beat it. So Danny's record stood alone. And then, nine months later, Tyler came back. He had one goal in mind, beat 1027, which he had made splits for to compare it to, and on attempt number 18,402, he had a shot at it. He was half a second ahead going into the last hole. If he could get an eagle, he would get the record. All he had to do was sink this putt and he would once again be crowned the champion of Wii Sports Resort. <sighs> Tyler had some work to do. He was back. After 20,000 attempts of Wii Sports Resort Golf, Tyler had himself a 1024. He was once again alone on top of the leaderboards. But he wasn't done yet.
By June 2020, Tyler had taken the record down to 1014, which is where the world record stands today. Tyler is the true champion of Wii Sports Resort Golf. It's hard to argue with nearly 26,000 attempts and 19 world records. His name currently rests at the top of the leaderboard, and it'll probably stay there for a while. How low can the speedrun go? Adding together the fastest front nine holes with the fastest back nine comes out to 10.05, but getting under 10 minutes is theoretically possible. MD Cross was the first person to get an 11 minute run. Tyler was the first to get a 10 minute run. So, who's gonna be the first to get a 9 minute run? Thanks for watching.